right guys, Peter or Max Momentum here, and today we're gonna go over the t first semi-finals game of Pro Tour LA. We got the Dromai Arthur, and one of the KOs that won the KO Mirror Droll uh, in our top four here. Let's just get right into it here. Let me skip a little bit ahead till we start. But we're getting in here. Uh, KO is gonna go first here in this matchup here. Uh, Joel is the 6th seed versus the 7th seed, so he has to actually choose if he wants to go first or second. He has decided to go first here. It, you get to know your opponent's deck list in top 8, which is really good. And he knows he doesn't actually have like the... That like opt, like the opt one, like prevent one, like arm piece. So the only way for him to... It's not really a way for Arthur to get Ash, besides if he draws Sigil exactly, and then uh, activates Furnace, right? So, going first here as KO, uh, he's going to start off with a Cast Bone. Pretty start cool start here. I got the full 6 for 6 here. We're going to get, with all of those, we're going to get the 6 Mites and that Agility here. Looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, it looks like 5 blues though. So it's 5 blues and the E strike on the top. He's going to be arsenaling one of these cards from his hand. Um, I know he had a wild ride, so he's probably going to arsenal that wild ride here. Something to look out for is that these 5 blue, like these 5 attack blues don't actually uh, don't actually count as poppers against Dromai's because they're, when they're, they're only 5 attack on the combat chain. So, we're going to look out for that in this matchup, but Cave does play an absurd amount of 6 powers uh, naturally in his deck. But we're looking like there's another E-Strike uh, and a Wild Ride here, so let's see what we go for. Now we're looking at Arthur's hand a little bit, it's Chromite, Mirror Guy, E-Strike, and a Nourishing Emptiness here. Alright, Joel goes back up. And yeah, this fires off that Nourishing Emptiness, really good way to start off making double ash. Gets rid of the E-Strike and the Chromai, so he's going to keep the Moragi in his arsenal here. So, Nourishing Emptiness for 6 with Dominate here because we have not started at all. Also, interesting technology, uh, Joel actually has Gambler's Gloves here, because uh, thinking that he will... Be rolling scabs and leathers a decent amount, so want to have gab, uh, game blues glove eventually. Sometimes you do need to roll uh, scabskins on turns to where you know the draw my player wants to be able to set up a like blue aura plus Moragi, and you don't have a go again card, or you need to kill multiple dragons on a turn, but you don't have uh, you don't have go again, and sometimes you just have to roll scabskin leathers in this matchup. So. Bringing the the gambler's glove for this as well, pretty interesting here. You don't see that too often. Looks like we're going for the full block out on the the nourishing here. So there's no block for seven here. Yep, because the full seven out of here does not get that on hit effect from the nourishing emptiness at all. Alright, six men in the agility pops here. We do know we do know that he has this E strike here. So I'd probably say E strike, bottom one of the blue cards here, draw a card. Uh, it's gonna be eleven with go again here, exactly what he's doing. So I'm gonna go again, drawing card, he hits another blue here. And then I expect him to, you know, pitch a blue, come with a wild ride as well. Or honestly, you could pitch, pitch a blue, come in with another, with like the other blue here, and then uh, Arsenal the Wild Ride here. That's also something you can do. Have a 16 point turn. Arthur does not care. He is taking 10 here, and uh, that uh, wave is going to pop, and then he's going to get a, a Spectral Shield here to be prevent another one here, so... Yeah, I mean, he's like, I just gotta take this damage. I can't, I can't not. And he does have a uh, Chromite with a Mirror Guy as well. So let's see what we got here, uh, going from Droll. Does have the double blue here in that Wild Ride. Let's see what he decides to do here. 
your opponent's gonna take that much, I think playing out the blue five here is probably gonna be your best option. And like play out the blue five, pitching the other blue, just coming for a 16 point turn here. Your opponent's already kind of down, taking a whole bunch of damage this turn, so he wants to keep his hand. And then you can keep a wild ride in your arsenal to be able to kill double dragon on the way back here. Okay, instead, instead we're pitching Claw here, just for three. You pitch this for three, and then you can discard uh, Agile Windup and make double token again. Uh, I can see, I, I see this play, I see, I think this play's actually, this, this play's better, this play's better. Yeah, this play's better, remaking the tokens, Arsenal the Wild Ride. Um, now you still can play, now you can probably keep the Wild Ride for an, another turn as well, going off this play, right? Um, we drew two cards from the stack, and then we drew one off the E-Strike, so we only know one last card from the six off cast bonus from the start of the game here. So we got, we know it should be E-Strike, if I remember correctly, because there's a whole bunch of blues in the E-Strike. Um, oh, we, we, need, we, need, we need to see one more. There's like the blue record romp. I don't know if we've seen that card either. But got Chroma and Moragi here. We have we're looking at that. Okay, so we do have the E Strike in hand. Can't pop this one. So we E Strike the the Wrecker Romp, uh, another blue, and then we have a another six power popper here. Takes the three off the Chroma here. I'm gonna go dust up for four here. So, dust up four go again. Well, four I should actually put here because of the chromai. Really good on hit here for four is going to make a Ashwing as well. Or surely he will swing right after if he if this dust up does hit. So one of those awkward like attacks from draw my side to where like it's just a zero for four, but it's a zero for four with an on hit. Um, and if you get to abuse that action point with Chrome Buy, you know, it's really, it's really nice. Drill thinking here, we have an E-Strike, uh, we have an E-Strike, a Wild Ride, and another Popper and a Wrecker Romp here. I think you just take this four here, which he's doing, he's going to 33. And then their Ash Wing is coming out. Alright, and it looks like he is going to be swinging with the Ash Wing here for one. Okay, isn't a swing one here? See what Joel wants to do here, because we have like basically double popper, E strike, and it's like he is just gonna take the one here. Doesn't pop it. Both the uh, tokens are going to pop here. Okay, so go six, go again, draw a card here from the E-Strike. One point off of being a New Zealand E-Strike. <laughs> I don't know if many people will understand that reference. But, uh, yeah, so six, six, go again, off this E-Strike here. So you just take straight six to the dome. Well, five because of the spectral shield here, so go to 25 from... Uh, the draw my player, and then we do need to be able to kill this at least one, like both of these dragons here. We do have the wild ride here, so he's just kind of using six to go out of the face. He needs to put that wild ride into presumably the Moragi here. He 
point at you. Do you point at him and not the... Hmm. Oh, and Beast Within Trigger here. Very good. Okay, blue pack hall here. I'm just gonna take the one. Wait, my token. Take him for another six here. Go again. I presumably uh, it's at Arthur as well. It's actually pretty interesting to uh, shoot the extra six at Arthur instead of at Droma instead of the, any of the dragons here. But he did hit the. Ooh, and we have double blue pitch here, and he has pulping, so he could claw. I'd be, I don't know. I, I this turn I'd be very inclined to wild ride the, the Moragi and then claw the Chromai, um, from this position. But Prince also going to take an additional six here. Because you have double blue here, I, I think you can claw the Chromai for three, and then oh, he's pulping. He's just going, he's just like, I'm not clinging board at all. I'm just killing you. I mean, this turn is insane, right? Like, uh, this is 18 so far. Uh, ooh. This card's a Blood Rush Bellow. Actually gets hella punished here. Uh, because he doesn't swing Claw here. So just... Hmm. So double blocks the Pulping. Doesn't get go again anymore. And then... Just gonna pass or presumably Arsenal this this last blue card in his hand. Um Yeah, I I I, I don't know if I agree with this this line. I think it I, I think if you're going to go do this pulping here, I think you just swing with claw. Hmm. Now you get like you Kyloria here for four. So I guess you could block with like a generic three plus the scapskin leathers. It's fine. I think because of the mass amount of Gogan that we had, I think I was perfectly fine clearing dragons here. You also could have like blue pitched clawed the Chromai, used tunic resources to send the last blue at your guy. And then you're clearing both the dragons and you're keeping pulping your arsenal. That had to be the play. It, looking at like the three card hand where it's pulping double blue, you have one resource floating, you can pitch the blue to, to claw, you've already discarded a card, so has to go again into the chromite, and then yeah, 100% that's the play. Um, this, but this, like, sending the pulping uh, at Arthur here, like, sending another six, and then uh, sending like a, like a claw or like a, a blue three, and then like arsenaling the last card, but it's like, you get hella punished because you did draw the non-attack, which is like very unlikely. You've already already cast a cast one, so there's only five like non-attacks left in your deck here, uh, and it unfortunately hits one. But yeah, it does get a uh, does get punished here. And then Arthur, you know, disciplined as he is, is not going to be swinging any of these dragons either. Looks like we have a yellow wild ride as well here. Let's see how he wants to play this game now. We know he has like a blue attack, I believe, in Arsenal. <laughs> Okay, he's finally looking like he's gonna clear wild ride, uh, draw discard at the Moragi. Okay, hits a pack all. He should make another my token here. Has a go again. Expect him just to claw here at the Chromai. Can't burn them all. Another 
nourishing emptiness. A dragon. Yeah, I, I'm just killing Kromai here. 100% kill Kromai. You've already seen one Kromai pitch to the bottom. He's blocked with a second one. This is the third Chromai. If you just kill it, it yeah, 100% you have to kill this Chromai here. Now you know your opponent doesn't have any Chromais. He's already used one Miragi. Um, so he only has uh, two left here to like, basically for like non-poppers. And then you're basically playing a game to where you have infinite cards that are poppers here. So, draws back up. Let's see what Larsa is going to do here. <laughs> We gotta burn them all here. And the Yender right here. And then we're just gonna come in with a either Ashwing here. Just for 1 1. Uh, you're taking the 100% of the Arcane from the Burn them all here, going to 31. We still haven't used this gold token, which is actually pretty interesting. We just had ha uh, we just had a whole bunch of turns from the the drum my player. Also, an interaction I learned this weekend was you know I didn't really test a lot of uh, brute versus draw my going into this uh, going into this uh, pro tour because I pretty much was not going to play draw my 100%, and then. Um, if I was playing KO, I was like pretty confident in the list that my team was bringing with KO for the PT, so I could just like learn it really fast if I wasn't uh, winning a whole bunch of games with Kano, which I was, so I you know kept with it. But I didn't actually know that Phantasm doesn't allow you to clash either, but it kind of makes sense now that I think about it. Um, but I saw somebody do that and I was like, wait, why didn't he clash? And then. Uh, I was like, wait, you didn't clash there? And he's like, you can't. And I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. But I know some people weren't playing Clash of Agilities. Uh, well, it's been in a lot of lists, but some people kind of turned off of playing a lot of those, a lot of the Clash cards so later into testing. So didn't really know too, too much about it. Looks like we have a defensive reaction pretty heavy hand here. So we're going to block a four with this fake proceeding on this yellow wild ride or six coming in with that mine token so presumably in our take two here go to 17 Alright, then we're in a tunic CNC here. 4 6 at the drum mic. I think it was a Ravenous Rabble in Arsenal, if I remember correctly. So we have a sink below, and we have at least one dragon in hand. We could uh, 3 card play here. He used to play double, he used to attack for 12, only pitching one blue, and the using the tunic resource here. Pretty good tunic equity as well. So we're definitely going at least three more turns here in this game, so you're going to get another tunic resource. Still looks like he has that blue card stuck in his arsenal. And it took the full six from the CNC here. You definitely want to Asvali Moragi from your hand and have the defense reaction. This game is looking actually quite good for Joel. Alright, playing out the 
Mirror Guy, and then it's going to attack with Kylori here for 4, and 1 Arcane. So it's going to take the 1, go to 30, and then it's going to attack for 4 here. What you can do here is because your Mandible Claw is going to get plus 1 from the My Token, uh, you do want to kind of clear the Mara guy. Uh, ooh, he has Blood Rush Bellow though. Is it blue with Blood Rush Bellow? Mm. See what he wants to do. I can't really see too much of his hand. If they just a yellow, I don't think it's probably worth it. Um, you know you have that blue card in your arsenal here. Um, so it's not incredibly... This is a, a decently awkward spot here. You, I mean, if you are a madman... No, there's no... There, uh, I mean, I guess you could... What you could do is you could block with one card plus the tunic. Uh, block for four... Because your opponent is at 11, so I'm pretty sure he's just trying to... It's not bad to let him hit for 4 here, because you're basically threatening to pop any like anything else that your opponent is playing here. Uh, and you're just trying to kind of kill your opponent with the, this Blooders Bellow coming in. So I think uh, taking the 4 here, let your opponent draw a card is pretty good. I think there's also a turn of play that you could make, is just like, uh, like put a 3 block and then Tunic out. And then if you have double six in your hand uh you could pop if he comes in with something else you pop if he comes in with something else and then play the blue like put the blue card from your arsenal uh to kill the, the moragi and then discard that agile wind up in your hand and arsenal the blower spell but this is a this is a pretty good play here Anyways, because he's just kind of coming with these ash wings here. Uh, gives up the the sink below equity in his arsenal here. So, I mean, if we didn't block the Kyloria here, I surely am not going to be blocking uh, anything else this turn. Uh, I would definitely be taking these ash wings here. Go to 24, to the inner edge, 21, and then he's not going to swing the Moragi. So just go to 21, 11. There's not a bad place to be here, actually. Especially with the Blood Rush Bellow. Although, if he does pitch a yellow and then plays Blood Rush Bellow, I don't know how worth this uh, turn was going to be. You save a whole bunch of life by popping this card here, which is probably going to be a little bit more life than what you would get if you just blow rush below. But I thought I saw a blue card in his hand on this turn. Okay, so this is a back with, block with the Savage Feast here. If I said the comes in his hand, then he has... I thought he had Pack Hall in his hand, so maybe he actually doesn't have a blue. Bench is two more attacks here. Alright. This needs to be a decently big turn to try to get Arthur out of the game here. We know we have the Bullrush Fellow in hand. scabs here roll scabs Ooh, gets the double action point pretty good pretty good it's the it's the above 50 percent here okay is so gonna attack the moragi here go to one action point and then pitch bowers below presumably coming in with this pack hole
very interesting hand then. Oh, I don't I, I don't think you killed a dragon here. I think you you definitely sent six upstairs. Uh especially when your opponent's at eleven. Send six upstairs with the intimidate. How did like double the yellow, double red in his hand then? Yeah, I, I, I can understand. I understand this play now. It's a little awkward because you did have to roll scab to be able to do this. But I guess you just took five, like four from the Kyloria and then popped the Ashwing, so it's perfectly fine. He's rolling hot with those dice, bro. He had rolled a five, five on the scab skins, five and then a six again, bro. Dude, the, the... Okay, hits one of the Synchros. Um, as well damn i know why this guy's be rolling <laughs> rolling in this tournament bro hit a it's a five five and a six dude incredible incredible brute bro incredible all right here we go uh still attacking for six here the pack call pack hunt here uh i think it's pretty in pretty good this game's pretty even here uh i definitely say i'd rather be on the ko side in this position 100 percent um i think the only downfall you can get from this game is if you play if you run into like a mass a mass of like five five power cards uh if you hit like kind of like a blue suite like he did at the beginning of the game or you draw a couple like non-blocks for your only sixes and you're taking a whole bunch of damage from all these dragons coming in but if you keep pressuring your opponent your opponent's at 11 so he kind of has to block a mass majority of the things that you're doing but it, we do have that card kind of trapped in our arsenal it's presumably a blue card from the beginning of the game so we kind of have a stuck arsenal here we see the second blower spell here being discarded as uh, being pitched. So we've started one, pitched one, so we have we still have cast buns. So two cast buns left, one blower spell for like the first cycle of non-attacks here. Which is something that you do need to uh, keep track of a decent amount. So take the full six here. Go to five. Wow. Are they going to five here? Five to twenty-six. Not looking too good. Let's see how else is gonna keep going here. So you, okay, it's gonna use the Mage Master boots. Go to two Ash. Play out the Passing Mirage and then the Asvali here. And then come in with four, no Phantasm here with the Kai, uh, Kaloria. Plays the Asvali to get go again here as well. And then does have a, another Sink below, I believe. Okay, so give up the tunic on this turn. Yep, buck for four. Opponent decides to go to five to make this play. Uh, is gonna take the one uh, arcane damage here from the burn them all. And then there's gonna be another Aether Ashwing here. Presumably, I'm always if I have another popper in my hand, I'm just popping this and then killing the passing. Um, your opponent took six damage to go to five here to be able to do this play. Uh, oh, he has a cast bonds as well. Okay, pops this here. Okay, if we got a cast bonus, surely rolling scabs, but you need to kill this passing mirage. All right, puts those three down. The I mean the cast bones. If he if he hits on the cast bones, it's a. Uh... That's how you know when this game. Okay, scabs and leathers here. We're rolling hot. Three. Thinks about it. He can gamble his gloves. You have a blue, a blue plus cast bones here. I mean, I guess you could. I guess you could take 
I mean, you could pitch away the cast buttons and just claw the passing mirage here. I would be surprised if you rerolled this here. I think, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised. Uh, it's just gonna kill the passing mirage here, which is basically it. Yeah. Makes the oh he's keeping the cast bones though I think I would have overpitched and I, I I think I was in an overpitch here if I was gonna make this play uh your front defense his first home of the game he's gonna draw two pitch two Okay, he's gonna pass uh Yandere and then a dust up here. He's gonna pop the okay, he's so gonna use furnace and then pop the gold here so he has one resource floating. the belt uh building mirage making an ash wing so attacks for three Joel's just gonna take it go to 22 you can use one of these e strikes and just do five go again off the e strike button the other e strike which is exactly what he does so you have another five Gogan here. Can't really see Joel's hand at all. Just like a little bit of a glimpse of it, so. Takes the five, goes to 17. Plays Pass Mirage and then passes here. I mean, if we're keeping our hand and not blocking at all uh, on these first couple of attacks, surely we have a go get card, correct? Seems like he might only have one more thing from the Burn the Mall. Yeah, it looks like we have an Agile wind up in our hand. So we're trying to see what he wants to do here. I think taking the damage here, taking the E damage and then playing the passing mirage is perfectly fine. Oh, he had a sav- oh, he had double savage feast in his hand. And then he's gonna discard Agile wind up to make the double tokens here. So it kills the dragon, and then it's gonna play cast bones. Interesting. Uh, it hits all six, so he's gonna have seven my tokens here, and that agility token. Okay, so he's leaving the passing on the field though. This is the this is the lose condition here. Is the passing? He looks like one, two, three, four sixes, and then two blues here. Still has the card in his arsenal. Uh, presumably, 
worst case out of the six is drawing triple red and then the double and the yellow and both blues being in the bottom here. Hmm. Forgot that he did have the cast bones in his hand, but I I mean, what? <sighs> Yeah, I, don't, I, I think this play, I think taking the damage correct and not agile wind up being um, on your opponent's turn here. Because if you agile wind up on your opponent's turn, then you pitch the cast bones to come in with the six, and you draw a card, but the card would have been red. So, presumably not that good. Okay, just has a. Okay, the, the blue is the three for five uh, in his arsenal. I just saw a glimpse of it. From the beginning of the game. Uh, billowing here for three, go again. But then passing more to the first illusionist attack, so. He doesn't have the passing mirage for the dragons. I mean, three go again here. I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. I'm taking it, right? Like I got, I got seven of my tokens. That's like, I have more of my tokens than his life, you know. Pitching the CNC here for nourishing emptiness. Okay, okay, okay. Pitching six dominate here. Ooh, just going for the nourishing emptiness into the CNC here. You could have actually CNC. I don't, I don't know. Your opponent most likely, if your opponent has a like playable hand, he just like takes the six from CNC, discards the arsenal, and just like double attacks you from hand. And he has seven, seven might tokens. So you're pretty much full blocking the first one, and you die to the second attack. Yeah, you can't do that. Uh, this allow. Well, you have simple. You still have the same. We still have the simple in arsenal, remember? Um, so simple plus one card in his hand. So, okay, he hits with this nourishing emptiness for six. So, sink below plus extra card in his hand actually covers the amount of might tokens that he has. And so, it really is just attacking twice. Oh, what are we looking at? We got a blue, yellow. Okay, we have blue, yellow in hand. Blue, yellow, red, red. Looks like he says, I'm gonna take six here. Goes to eight. He's gonna get a extra. It's a card. Let's see if he burn them all. Like, if he has enough cards for burn them all. Three, four, five. Okay, he does. Okay. I think he might have enough for one more on burn them all. It looks like he had like one or two cards on the bottom for his reds. Okay, draws five cards here. Joel, can he finish him on this turn? Looks like he drew one, two block, is no block, two, three blocks, and. Oh, B chest here. He's gonna take one, go to seven on that beast within. So B chest does not care. So B chest doesn't care if it's uh, not random. I know. Uh, there's like rejuvenate, which was like a blue three for five that people were playing. Uh, B chest doesn't work with it, putting it to the bottom because it's not a random effect. But uh, this is 12 go again here. Drew an additional blue. So it looks like we have break, tome. Ravenous. Oh, we didn't actually draw a defense reaction here. So we have two two blocks, two three blocks, and a non block in hand. Then we have sink below an arsenal. Surely we're blocking like double three block, sink below from arsenal, take two, sink the tome, have three cards in hand. So that's two two. Oh, doesn't Joel have. He has a blue in hand. And he has at least one red, two for six. So he could claw and then two for six the face. Oh, we also have flame. We still have the two block from flame scale as well. We have six, seven, ten, fourteen, sixteen. 
points of block value here. He's attacking for 1521, so it'd be six. So that Sinkolo has to, uh, Sinkolo has to have a block for Arthur not to die. Okay, it looks at the line block for eight here. 100% we're going to seek below rate. Makes the most sense. Throws that tome to the bottom, draws a card. What the fuck is it? I, 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 I can't see cards. I don't know. Oh, sigil, sigil, sigil. Uh, so we know he has a blue pitch here, and he's discarded the card, so Man of Claw for three. One has three cards in his hand. I mean, I'm attacking. I'm attacking face, right? There's no way you don't do anything just to attack three face. Like, you have the agility and the my token for the following turn as well. Like, three six here is just incredible. Opponent takes three here. Makes sense. Goes to two. Is it a pitch of red? Yep. Uh, last card is the swing big here. So Joel actually did have to have to hit that 50-50 of drawing the blue off the top to have like to be able to claw to be able to claw come with a two for six. So he, I mean, he loses one. I mean, instead of coming with claw, class of agility, he just comes in with set, uh, comes in for eight. He draws the other way. So, block for two here. You could sigil, take one, go to one. Like, basically, block five, take one, go to one. And then you have. So, five, you block two, you know, go to one here, you know, one to seven. Game's close. Game's super close. Okay, you've put five red cards in uh, your grave, your graveyard this turn, so you're gonna get one more off the burn them all at least. So we know he's, we know he has a, a swing big. Oh, did I just see Pulping and Wild Ride in his hand? So two non-blocks? Oh, and we have a Burn the Wall in here, on, on top? Wait, this is a travesty. Yeah, because he has the two non-blocks, right? Uh, because you have to block with the, oh, and the first thing doesn't get, you, you can't, plus passing Mirage is going to make it so the first illusionist thing can't get popped. So he's going to come in with Raven's Travel for four. You could block three with the Blood Rush Bellow, take one crit of six. It comes with Asvali because he's going to do an arcade, two arcane. Take two arcane, go to four. You take another two off the Azvali, go to two. He swings with, you know, an Ashwing or the thing you pop it with swing big. And then you claw the Azvali, he draws. You can banish six cards from the burn them all. Presumably, you play the second burn them all. You do three arcane damage to your opponent and he dies. Oh my god, Arthur won the game. Arthur actually won. <laughs> what? This game looks so bad for so long. Even on this, like, even on this turn, it, it was like, oh, you have, you know, agility, my token. Wow. Wow. I mean, he just has to take it. Takes the two, takes it in the...
can't pop it because of the passing mirage. Wow, he actually loses because he has double non block. If either of those cards are a popper, yeah, because he, he either, and then they're both not kind of resource tokens either, so. Ah, it goes to two, just has double, double non block in hand. Yeah, can, can finish six here. With the burn them all to keep it around. You have the two arcane like already on the board. Uh and he's drawing the second burn them all. Can't kill kill all three dragons here as well, so you can just double pitch red to Damn, doesn't it have a blue or a yellow here? And like if he has a blue and yellow in the pulping, you could pulping kill your opponent at one here. Yeah, Joel uh, can't do anything. He just kills the Asfly here. He kills the Asfly, plays the second Burn Them All, attacks with the Ashwing. Wins the game. Yeah, second second Burn Them All here, attacks with the Dragon, two Arcane. Can't do anything, don't have a Reventus spell, gain life. Arthur, making it to the finals. That was actually an epic game. I actually didn't watch this game before. Uh, while it was happening wow that's actually crazy to play definitely think there was like some moments where jewel could have played slightly differently but wow that actually game is like an i don't i don't think there was like huge blunders from jewel's side either like to to lose from that position but besides the di like not clawing first right i think if you oh my god if you claw first you win the game yeah, I, I guess. All right, hundred percent. Well, uh, that's gonna be it for this first semifinals game uh, here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.